welcome to our channel. How Caitlin Clark's DVNBA spark is akin to the Be Like Mike impact of Jordan in the NBA. Before Michael Jordan had ever played in an official NBA game, his sneakers generated conversation and controversy. Jordan wore a pair of primarily black Nikes with a red swoosh during his first preseason games. The Chicago Bulls, worried about the shoes glitz, had reservations about him doing it again. The NBA objected too and threatened a $1,000 fine if he rocked them a second time and $5,000 for every time after that. Exactly four decades later, Caitlin Clark's sneakers also made headlines before her first official game. Last spring, Clark agreed to a historic eight-figure endorsement deal with Nike that is expected to result in her own signature shoe. There were no threats of fines this time around, but there was ample chatter about what it meant for a rookie, unproven in the professional game, to ink such a lucrative and high-profile agreement. Clark has been compared to other greats in basketball. Her shooting echoes Stephen Curry and Sabrina Ionescu. Her floor vision and pinpoint passing remind fans of Sue Bird. Alongside fellow rookie Angel Reese, the two instant impact players have been compared to Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, whose college matchups and professional meetings bridged the two levels together and helped boost the NBA in the 1980s. Clark, of course, has a long way to go before amassing a resume to match Jordan's six NBA championships and six finals MVPs, five NBA MVP awards, and 10 scoring titles. She's just embarking on her first playoffs as a rookie, leading the WNBA, but her effect on the WNBA is already similar to his airness impact on the NBA. Beyond flashing a callback to Jordan's classic shrug after big plays, Clark's impact is reminiscent to Jordan's in other important ways, mass commercial appeal, national celebrity, and the ability to catapult the sport to new heights. This is a culmination of a lot of factors over the course of time, said Bill Lanebeer, who played against Jordan throughout his 13-year NBA career and later coached more than a decade in the WNBA. The NBA and WNBA kind of mirror each other along the way, from the influx of talent, the rule changes to speed the game up, the name recognition because of TV and the competitive nature. Clark and Jordan first became stars in college, leading their home state universities to NCAA tournament glory. More than 17 million people tuned into CBS for the 1982 national championships and watched freshman Jordan hit the go-ahead jumper with 17 seconds remaining to lift UNC to a national title. At the time, it was the second most watched title game broadcast. Clark, meanwhile, also created a ratings bonanza in women's college basketball with her logo three pointers and clutch plays for Iowa. She headlined the most watched women's NCAA tournament with the Iowa's 2024 national championship appearance against South Carolina, averaging 18.9 million viewers. But the professional leagues Jordan and Clark entered didn't have the same proven viewership loyalty as they helped inspire in college. The rise of Jordan and Clark didn't occur without strong foundations. There were pro stars before the two arrived. Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Wilt Chamberlain, Julius Irving, Bird Johnson. In the WNBA, Rebecca Lobo, Cheryl Miller, Lisa Leslie, Tamika Catchings, Diana Teresi, Candace Parker, Aja Wilson, and Brianna Stewart. There were developments in the actual gameplay of both leagues, which created a more exciting product and changes in the media environment. Through 1981, rating dips prompted NBA Finals games to be mostly on tape delay, and the Celtics and Lakers were the most frequently televised games. Viewers eventually began warming up to the league and a new wave of athletes, but it was Jordan who came in and electrified it with his showmanship as the Bulls dominated in the 1990s for peak numbers. Because of Michael being in the league, we went from one or two games a week on TV in the 80s to almost every night there was a game on, former Cavaliers guard Craig Ello told Bleacher Report. I think the NBA marketing ability for the rest of the teams was beneficial with Michael being in the league. If he never plays, 
I don't think they have that power to get the TV deals that they got. Thanks you for watching. Stay connected with us for more videos.